Welcome to Pax Europeana, the podcast about peace in Europe and about in this special series, 30 years now economic transition in Europe. And it's now also 30 years of independence of Macedonia in uh, 2021. Uh, uh, and I'm very honored to welcome Professor Slavetsky. He is one of the leading uh, economic reformers, professor at the University of Skopje and also former Minister of Finance. I would like to welcome you very much, Professor, and also give you the opportunity to introduce you to our audience uh, personally. Please welcome, Professor. Okay, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, okay, I, uh, uh, as you said, uh, uh, Professor Trajko Slavesky, I teach at the National University, San Cyril and Methodius here in uh, Skopje. I'm a, a full professor. Uh, I was born 1960, so I have experience uh, uh, from the former system, uh, 30 years from the former system and 30 years <laughs> with the new system, uh, Masonia, uh, in, transition, in transition and the post-transitional uh, post -trans uh, period. Uh, so, uh, as uh, you know, uh, most of the people in a, a small country who have uh, some uh, expertise, I was drawn uh, unwillingly into politics uh, in 2000, uh, 1999, 2000, uh, shortly for one year. I uh, was invited in government uh, uh, to serve as a minister of development. There was a ministry of development uh, uh, then. Uh, that was a period where were, uh, when there were uh, uh, frequent uh, changes in recom recompositions in the government. So I didn't last uh, very long, one year. And uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2003, I uh, got, it, got into politics, as I uh, would uh, say, uh, with uh, two legs, uh, when I became uh, a, a member of the executive committee of the Vemro uh, Dapamanaya party, after uh, the change in the leadership, uh, when uh, the former president, Mr. Ljubčo Girgevski, uh, let's say, decided to uh, you know, uh, uh, leave the uh, leadership of the party. And uh, Mr. Grevsky was elected at uh, the Congress in uh, Okrit in May uh, 2003 as uh, president. So I served uh, as a member of the executive committee. In 2006, we won uh, parliamentary, uh, parliamentary elections and uh, I uh, became uh, Minister of Finance and I served for full, uh, for full uh, three years. And, uh, 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 until 2009, uh, when I was uh, uh, sacked uh, by Mr. Grevsky uh, uh, because of some disagreements uh, uh, on the, uh, let's say, uh, directions that uh, the politics and policies uh, took uh, at that time after three successful years of uh, the transition development of the Republic of Macedonia. Uh, that was a uh, very, uh, let's say, uh, nervous time because of the uh, consequences of the financial and uh, uh, economic crisis uh, uh, because of the Great Recession 2007-2009. So, uh, you know, I uh, uh, never stopped uh, with uh, my duties at the university. I still uh, teach. I teach uh, uh, several courses, uh, macroeconomics, uh, intermediate macro. Then uh, I teach a micro course, which is uh, uh, government regulation of business and uh, some other courses uh, at the postgraduate level. Professor, you have a very distinguished CV and uh, you are the perfect man to talk about the economic transition in Macedonia, absolutely. I would like to take you back first to the uh, difficult moment of the breakup of Yugoslavia, the independence of uh, Macedonia in 91. And please, can you elaborate a bit how the economic conditions were at this moment? Was it difficult? What was the leftover of Yugoslavia? How could uh, Macedonia cope with the transition? Uh, 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 it is, uh, as it is well known, uh, Macedonia at that time uh, was uh, led by the late uh, uh, president, Mr. Gligorov, uh, uh, who, uh, as a leader, uh, together with uh, some other uh, let's say former uh, Yugoslav leaders from the former Yugoslav republics uh, uh, was uh, trying to save the uh, federation. But, uh, uh, you know, as history has shown that uh, uh, was a uh, failed attempt. And uh, in uh, uh, autumn uh, to, uh, uh, 1991, uh, Macedonia held a uh, uh, referendum for independence. 
uh, several uh, months uh, uh, were necessary for uh, preparation for uh, declaration of full uh, independence because you know the, the Yugoslav institutions and uh, the former Yugoslav army was still present in the country and uh, the leadership at that time uh, uh, you know uh, uh, tried to, to to have a peaceful uh, let's say uh, uh, dissolution or independence of uh, Macedonia without any conflict, as uh, we have seen earlier that year, 1991 in uh, Slovenia and uh, Croatia. And uh, uh, in April, uh, 26 of April, uh, 1992, the following year, uh, we declared financial uh, and monetary independence when we uh, introduced our own uh, currency, the uh, dinner. So that was the end. Uh, uh, of it. In the meantime, the Yugoslav army, as uh, it is known, in the months of uh, February, uh, March uh, 1992, pulled out of uh, Macedonia, leaving uh, almost nothing in terms of equipment. Uh, you know, I, uh, at, that, at that time, I, uh, uh, that was the time when I, I made my first steps in uh, advising uh, uh, the government. I uh, was a member of a small uh, uh, team of economists that it, uh, prepared the introduction of uh, the uh, national currency, the, the dinner. We worked, uh, we, we, we worked for several, several months, uh, you know, uh, behind the eyes uh, uh, and ears of the public. And uh, we designed anti-inflationary program uh, because uh, 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 to remind you, uh, uh, at the month of uh, declaring of monetary independence, uh, that is April, 1992, uh, Yugoslavia or the uh, ramp Yugoslavia at that time without uh, Slovenia and Croatia uh, was experiencing hyperinflation. In uh, April 1992, uh, uh, the monthly inflation uh, in uh, uh, Macedonia was 86%. So uh, with the introduction of uh, the own currency and with this uh, 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 orthodox program, uh, we uh, achieved uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reduce the inflation in August that year, 1992, to 6% uh, per month, but the uh, situation was uh, unstable. We only had uh, 6 million uh, uh, US dollars uh, in terms of uh, foreign uh, exchange, because, uh, you know, Macedonia uh, was uh, uh, the most compliant of uh, the former Yugoslav republics in terms of, uh, let's say, not undermining uh, uh, financial conditions, uh, foreign exchange reserves. Uh, that was not uh, the case with, uh, let's say, uh, the former uh, Yugoslav republics like Slovenia, uh, Serbia, etc. So that uh, that's why we were uh, left uh, almost with nothing to build our uh, foreign exchange reserves uh, to. Uh, let's say uh, back up the currency uh, almost uh, uh, from from nothing. Uh, the, the program di didn't last uh, long. Uh, uh, I mean, because uh, because of, of uh, the uh, difficulties, instability, Macedonia was not recognized. Later on, we became members uh, with uh, recognition, members of uh, International Monetary F uh, Fund and uh, the World Bank. And uh, uh, starting from uh, January 1993, uh, uh, we uh, got into a program with uh, uh, International Monetary F uh, Fund. And uh, uh, for uh, the next, uh, for the following few years, the situation, uh, macroeconomic situation stabilized. Uh, the uh, process of privatization, however difficult, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, followed with uh, injustices uh, uh, was uh, uh, implemented. Uh, uh, so Macedonia was uh, following uh, the steps, uh, standard steps of uh, uh, the transition process, which uh, you know uh, uh, comprises of uh, macroeconomic stabilization, privatization, uh, uh, industrial or uh, uh, restructuring uh, of uh, enterprises and uh, uh, deregulation. Uh, so it uh, took, uh, let's say, uh, five, six years in order to uh, have a functioning uh, economy uh, with uh, the low uh, standards of uh, uh, livings. And uh, in 1998, we had the change in government. The uh, former uh, communists or uh, social democrats, uh, democrats lost the elections with, uh, at uh, that time. Uh, 
uh, Vomorod de Pamane with uh, uh, party led Mr. with Mr. Tuprokovsky, which is uh, well known uh, from the, uh, let's say, former Yugoslav uh, uh, federal government. Uh, he was member of the presidency. Uh, they formed a co coalition and uh, uh, let's say started uh, some reforms, continued with the process of privatization. Uh, et uh, uh, on the ethnic front, uh, uh, let's say uh, conditions started to, to improve because uh, a valuable member of the uh, coalition at that time was uh, DPA uh, led uh, by uh, uh, the late uh, Mr. Uh, Jaferi. But uh, somehow, uh, you know, uh, in 2001, uh, as a consequence of uh, the spillover of the Kosovo conflict, uh, we had internal conflict, which lasted six months with, uh, uh, let's say, very serious consequences on uh, uh, destabilizing the country on political and economic front. Uh, so then, uh, you know, the Ohrid frame, Framework Agreement uh, uh, came uh, and uh, this is uh, shortly the situation after independence. Uh, in, in the meantime, I, uh, I, I would I, I would add, you know, in the meantime, we we, we suffered from the uh, embargo uh, that uh, was uh, imposed by uh, Greece. Uh, our uh, problems with, uh, uh, let's say, denying our name and non-recognition uh, uh, started with with that time until, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, signing in 1995. The uh, interim framework ag agreement with with Greece, we were uh, blocked. Uh, uh, so uh, economy, uh, the economy was struck with uh, uh, multiple uh, shocks, uh, internal, uh, internal and external. Uh, the uh, let's say very same uh, the the very uh, dissolution of the former Yugoslav market uh, market. Uh, 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 Macedonia was much reliable on it, and uh, uh, dissolution of the uh, former. Uh, East European uh, uh, market, uh, etc. So the economy uh, had to cope uh, with uh, with uh, 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 immense difficulties, uh, and uh, uh, the consequence was the process of uh, deindustrialization. We lost most, uh, much of the jobs, uh, much of the industry, and uh, as elsewhere in early 90s, like in uh, uh, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic. People, you know, uh, uh, had to uh, struggle for existence uh, in uh, opening small shops, uh, services, uh, businesses, uh, etc. Et uh, sorry, go ahead, Professor. Let me ask you because it was certainly very difficult times in the 90s for Macedonia, given the Greek policy, the Balkan wars, also then the Kosovo war. But let me ask you about your currency policy because today the Macedonian dinner is pegged to the euro. And when did it actually start the hard currency policy of Macedonia? And what was your currency policy to bring stability to the country? Uh, listen, uh, uh, thank you for this, uh, this question. And this is uh, uh, quite important uh, for us. And we macroeconomists are, are proud of uh, uh, this uh, 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 stability of the exchange rate, rate which, is, uh, which is the basis of the overall macroeconomic stability. Uh, the last correction uh, of the exchange rate or uh, the last uh, uh, devaluation uh, Masonia had uh, in the summer of 1997. Uh, before that, before that, the, uh, the uh, dinner was uh, uh, packed with the Deutsche Mark. Uh, and until uh, 1998 or 2000, with uh, with the introduction of euro, it, it is uh, being packed with uh, with the euro. Uh, so the the peg is the uh, uh, the, the 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 basis uh, of uh, our uh, macroeconomic uh, stability, and uh, this is one of the rare issues uh, 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 on which there is a consensus between, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, academic establishment and political establishment in the country, that this is something that uh, needs to be uh, preserved because we are a small market, a small open economy, and everybody understood that this is the best way uh, to, uh, let's say, provide uh, uh, some stability for uh, the businesses uh, and for the government to make their plans for, for development. And uh, what is the, uh, what is the, let's say secret of uh, this success the secret is that we we have kept the inflation rate 
uh, uh, quite low. And uh, within the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, limits of the inflation rate uh, in the Eurozone, uh, because there is no way that uh, you can uh, achieve uh, uh, this uh, uh, peg for uh, uh, and uh, keep it for almost a quarter of century. Uh, if you, let's say, have uh, high inflation, uh, then uh, uh, the, the uh, group of countries that you peg your currency, that is Eurozone or uh, the Euro, uh, because in, uh, you know, if, if, if there is uh, uh, inflation differential, uh, uh, you will uh, need to uh, devalue in, in terms, let's say, to uh, uh, preserve the competitiveness of uh, the economy. So the competitiveness uh, in real terms has not uh, changed, and this is validated by uh, international financial institutions. So you pursue the hard currency policy, and that's also the situation, obviously, with the euro countries uh, to back the currency. I would like to ask you about the issue of the uh, devaluation of the Serbian dinar, because Serbia is certainly a big trading partner for Macedonia, and the Serbian dinar has declined very much in the value. Was this difficult for the competitiveness of the Macedonian economy? Uh, not, not much, because in the, uh, at the same time, they had uh, high inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of, uh, so it, 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 it comes to the same. It comes to the same. Uh, let's say, unlike Macedonia, uh, Serbia uh, has pursued and uh, still pursues a uh, uh, policy of, uh, uh, as we economists say, dirty floating. Dirty floating, uh, you know, they have nominally uh, a, a floating exchange rate, but uh, uh, with uh, massive interventions because, you know, uh, they, uh, 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 their economy is not uh, that uh, big and that stable. Uh, to uh, uh, leave uh, the uh, currency to be determined its value on the market. So uh, they uh, follow a policy of massive uh, interventions when there, is, uh, there are discrepancies at the foreign exchange market. So um, one of the uh, basis of economic policy of Macedonia was a hard currency policy. Let me come back uh, to how complicated it was. There was the Kosovo war, there was the internal conflict of 2001, and then was time for reconstruction. Also, can you tell how in the international involvement after 2001, was it supportive of Macedonian development in the period 2001 to 2006? Uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we continued, we, we, we continued uh, with uh, uh, standby arrangement, arrangement with uh, International Monetary Fund, you know, countries that uh, in uh, that uh, phase of uh, development and with uh, 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 external uh, shocks, uh, uh, instability, uh, so when they are building, uh, uh, let's say, sufficient uh, level of uh, foreign exchange, uh, need uh, this uh, support from uh, IMF. So we have, uh, I, I have, I have uh, worked with uh, IMF about as uh, since early uh, 2000 uh, uh, as uh, uh, an advisor to the Minister of Finance, as a Minister of Finance advisor uh, of uh, governments uh, in the in the in the meantime. So uh, it it provided uh, credibility of our uh, macroeconomic policy. Uh, we didn't uh, uh, draw uh, significant amounts of uh, credits, uh, both from IMF and the uh, uh, World Bank. Uh, World Bank was uh, supportive uh, with uh, loans for, uh, uh, let's say, industry uh, and uh, restructuring of uh, loss-making enterprises uh, with uh, technical support, uh, etc. So we uh, were beneficiary, beneficiary of uh, uh, financial support of uh, European Investment Bank uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 infrastructure loans, uh, which are under uh, quite uh, favorable conditions. European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, in 2007, and I was a Minister of uh, Finance at that time, we decided uh, when uh, the uh, last uh, standby arrangement with IMF was uh, phasing out uh, to, well, let's say, discontinue uh, this uh, uh, form of, uh, of uh, relationship with uh, the IMF. Uh, I must uh, say that the day and uh, part of the public were not happy uh, with that, but, uh, you know, later on it proved that uh, we were 
uh, able to lead uh, 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 more flexible uh, macroeconomic policies. And uh, we had uh, uh, very uh, uh, two very good years be be because uh, before the uh, financial crisis in 2007, 2008, uh, the rates of growth were uh, above uh, 5%. Uh, 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 you know, uh, the rate of inflation was uh, quite low, except for uh, some uh, period of six months, uh, 2007, 2008, when, when there was uh, 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 an increase of uh, uh, the prices of the commodities and the food and energy on the world markets. Uh, so we experienced uh, we experienced uh, uh, temporarily uh, higher levels uh, of inflation. Uh, we were uh, very proud, you know, when we uh, proposed in uh, January 2007 to uh, repay uh, early uh, that debt that was, uh, you know, uh, 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 undertaken uh, with the succession of the former Yugoslavia with the Paris Club of uh, Creditors. And uh, two years before that, in 2005, uh, Mastonia when uh, you know uh, the previous government uh, and the minister, uh, my predecessor in the Ministry of Finance, uh, Mr. Nikola Popovsky, Professor Nikola Popovsky, uh, they uh, issued the first uh, the euro bond, uh, so we repaid the London Club of uh, Creditors, and uh, you know the uh, credibility of the country uh, on the uh, private markets uh, uh, has uh, has increased. And now we come to uh, unfortunate period of uh, 2008, 2009 with the uh, you know, financial crisis and the consequences were uh, grave for the Macedonian economy uh, as uh, elsewhere in the region and in the world uh, as a whole. Professor, let me ask you, in 2006, uh, the GDP per capita in Macedonia was about $3,000. And in 2008, in within two years, it was close to $5,000 per capita. So this is a period of enormous growth and prosperity for uh, Macedonians. And also, can you describe, because you were the Minister of Finance at that time, what exactly were the key reforms to make this uh, Macedonian economic miracle possible? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, in our uh, electoral program, uh, you know, I was representative of the Vomero uh, de Pomene, and uh, at that time, uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2005, I was uh, elected vice president of the uh, party of uh, Vemur de Pomene when uh, my predecessor, uh, Mrs. Uh, 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 Ganka Samuilova Cvetanova, uh, resigned. Uh, so, in our election program, and I uh, led the team that uh, prepared this election pro uh, program for the elections uh, uh, during the summer, uh, parliamentary elections during the summer 2006. Uh, we uh, uh, designed a very ambitious uh, program. For example, uh, tax reform. We introduced uh, uh, several months after you know taking office. Uh, from the first first of January 2007, we introduced a flat tax, and uh, not only uh, for personal income and uh, you know profit tax. Uh, not only we uh, uh, we uh, uh, you know we scrapped the uh, previous. Uh, uh, brackets of progressive uh, taxation uh, that were present in the country, but we reduced the rates uh, to 12% uh, uh, for 2007, uh, with additional reduction to 10% uh, from uh, 1st January 2008. And still, uh, this policy this policy uh, applies uh, at the moment that we speak. The Social Democrats, uh, who have been, uh, you know, in government for uh, four years now four years now, uh, tried uh, two years ago uh, to introduce uh, progressive taxation, but uh, after nine months, they backed uh, because, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, they, they saw the negative consequences of uh, that, that, uh, that uh, shift. So uh, in addition to uh, tax reform, uh, we uh, Let me first say also- the Tax reform, can you tell if there was more revenues or less revenues for the budget because of- Oh, 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 oh. you know, there is a quote in the, uh, the uh, Wall Street Journal at that time, I gave an interview for The Economist, uh, uh, where, you know, we clearly state uh, that uh, uh, not, 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 not only, you know, not, not only there was no reduction of uh, revenue in 2007, but uh, we uh, uh, had 20% more uh, revenue in the budget uh, from uh, these taxes that uh, you know we uh, lowered the rates, uh, then we uh, 
uh, projected. So it was uh, quite uh, successful, quite successful reform. Listen, you know, I'm an economist. I, I, I know, I know uh, the uh, debates in uh, other uh, developed countries, United States, uh, the so-called Laffer curve, uh, 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 the supply side economics, etc. Uh, so uh, uh, we uh, think that we struck the right balance uh, balance for a country at that level of development. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, apologetic about uh, uh, you know low uh, and uh, rates of taxation and flat rate, but uh, you have to have in mind that you are dealing uh, with a country uh, uh, still uh, underdeveloped, a country with uh, a high level of uh, 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 you know unofficial or gray economy. Uh, Etc. So it uh, proved uh, to be the right policy at that time, and and now uh, uh, I I I, I uh, mentioned this that the social democrats, uh, uh, you know, who 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 ran uh, uh, in 2016 on uh, this program to introduce progressive taxation, uh, they uh, tried and failed and. We still have uh, uh, flat uh, taxes in uh, Macedonia. Professor, can you explain why the Social Democrats went back to the flat tax? Then, what was the effect of their progressive uh, adventure? Oh, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, this was a uh, we're we're speaking, I think, uh, now uh, of uh, 2018 or 2019. Uh, you know, many, many professionals uh, in the IT industry. Uh, so in Macedonia, there are quite a few engineers, you know, who out, uh, work on outsourcing from home, uh, et cetera. They, they were very happy to, you know, report uh, their incomes that uh, to pay 10% taxes. And when uh, uh, the, the, uh, there was uh, when uh, a higher rate of uh, 18% was introduced, many of them opened accounts in Kosovo, in Bulgaria, in Serbia. So, 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 and the government, the government, even, you know, uh, they were honest, uh, made uh, some circles in the government because there, were, there was clashing governments between uh, left uh, and extremely left oriented uh, representatives and advisors in the government and the business uh, lobby in the, in, in, in the government, which was not happy. Uh, with this shift uh, towards progressive taxation. So they, they, uh, I uh, can't remember at this uh, moment uh, on, on their calculations, but they calculated that Macedonia has lost uh, in revenue millions of uh, euros uh, uh, in, in, uh, because of this, uh, of this uh, 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 failed attempt. So that was a very successful pillar of your reforms in 2006. That was the introduction of a 10% flat tax, one of the main achievements. I, I, yes, that, that was that was one of the main achievements. But uh, 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 in addition to this, uh, we introduced a very aggressive uh, 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 deregulation uh, of uh, the economy, scrapping the you know unnecessary regulations, laws. We called it uh, regulatory guillotine. Uh, that was uh, second. Uh, the third was very aggressive promotion of Macedonia for foreign investment. You know that uh, at, at that time, for the uh, for the first time, Macedonia appeared uh, with uh, paid advertisement on, uh, advertisements in uh, uh, European and uh, global media. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, succeeded. We, we were much criticized in the country about that uh, uh, policy. You know. Uh, 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 and uh, we uh, uh, were aware that uh, Macedonia was uh, a small country and, and it was uh, as a dot on a European map not uh, 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 known or uh, foreign investors were not familiar with, uh, with this space. And uh, we uh, succeeded to put uh, the country on the map of the foreign investors. And uh, in addition to this, uh, you know, the, the government uh, uh, invited uh, some uh, let's say, uh, experts uh, of Macedonian uh, origin uh, who uh, have worked abroad uh, with experience, uh, sent them uh, to aggressively promote the country, meet foreign investors. I have participated in uh, such uh, several such road, road shows and it paid. It paid, you know, uh, started with uh, starting with, uh, 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 for example, jo Johnson Metty and other companies that were uh, first to uh, uh, to to uh, be beneficiaries of the so-called technical uh, industrial economic zones, 
uh, with uh, benefits uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, labor taxes, etc., for 10 years, uh, with subsidies. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, invent anything that other countries before us uh, uh, haven't done uh, in this uh, uh, struggle uh, for attraction of foreign investment, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a small uh, and undeveloped country, uh, that was uh, uh, one of the, uh, let's say, policies that uh, we had, uh, we had to, to implement. And uh, last, uh, starting from January uh, of uh, uh, 2009, uh, and I also led that uh, reform, we uh, reduced the rates for payroll uh, taxes uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, taxes for uh, uh, health, uh, uh, insurance, uh, 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 pension and disability insurance, etc., uh, and all, uh, all all of that was aimed to uh, reduce the so-called wedge, uh, the difference between the net uh, uh, wage and the gross wage, which was uh, uh, quite quite large in Macedonia. It was uh, 50 percent, and we reduced this difference uh, uh, to 33 percent. Uh, we uh, were aware that these are pro-business, uh, uh, of course, policies, but uh, you know uh, that was uh, that was that was uh, 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 those were the right policies uh, at the moment for uh, Macedonia, and of course uh, uh, the benefits uh, spread uh, spilled over the, the country. The rate of unemployment, which was extreme, extremely high, uh, high. I didn't mention that. Uh, the rate of unemployment in Macedonia, even before the breakup of Yugoslavia, was over 20%. And <clears throat> uh, in 2005, <clears throat> 2005, before uh, the change in government, the rate of unemployment was Macedonia at the highest level of 38%. And it started to uh, uh, decrease, and now uh, it is around uh, 16 or 17%, uh, with unfortunate, you know. Uh, now reversal of the trend because of uh, the pandemics. Professor, let me also ask for this achievement of reforming of the land market of the cadastre system and the digital construction permits, because it's one of the most transparent systems in the world and it has a huge effect on the mortgage market, on the banking market as well. Can you elaborate on that sector of your reforms? Uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 I was not directly involved, uh, of course, in, <coughs> in uh, these reforms. Uh, <coughs> sorry, these were uh, led by other uh, portfolios in the, in the government. By, uh, but uh, uh, the cutters uh, and uh, 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 in particular, during the period when uh, my former, uh, let's say employee, he was uh, 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 director of the directorate in the Ministry of Finance, uh, 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 the re regulatory uh, department, the Ministry of Finance, he became uh, director of the uh, cataster and they implemented, uh, uh, let's say, serious reforms uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, benefiting from foreign assistance. I can't remember which countries and which institutions did, did help. But uh, we, uh, we made much uh, progress uh, with the cadaster. And from what I read at that time uh, for the neighboring, uh, some of the neighboring countries, which are members of the European Union, so our cadaster uh, was uh, uh, ahead uh, compared, let's say, with the cadaster of uh, the neighboring Greece or uh, some, other, some other countries. So, but, uh, you know, this is, this is, this, these are uh, the uh, third or the fourth, uh, uh, <clears throat> Oh, uh, 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 level of uh, of uh, uh, reforms, uh, uh, institutional reforms uh, for uh, supporting of uh, the uh, market economy, uh, and uh, this uh, 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 helped very much in uh, the process of uh, not only def definition, proper definition of property rights, but as you said. Uh, uh, about the uh, let's say uh, uh, reviving uh, the real estate market. So you are you're, you're 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 right that these were uh, also very beneficial reforms. It was um, absolutely fascinating to see the digital construction permit. Uh, Macedonia being one of the most transparent country in the forms of uh, digital uh, granting of um, construction permits, which is often such a corrupt uh, sector. And this is really a top class achievement. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Professor, let me ask you also about the trade relations of Macedonia. 
because Macedonia joined also the Central European Free Trade Agreement. What, how was that effective and uh, what was your contribution on that? Uh, you know, we have uh, uh, our uh, chambers of commerce are quite, uh, uh, let's, say, let's say, effective, vocal. Uh, they uh, remind uh, almost all of the time the uh, government, uh, uh, the previous government, this government, uh, about the, uh, let's say, some uh, problems uh, that they face in, uh, in, in the trade relationships. So uh, on the, on the uh, CEFTA, I'm not a, an expert in uh, foreign trade. Uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, it uh, uh, might have had uh, uh, some uh, positive, uh, positive contributions. Uh, but uh, not uh, not uh, uh, to the level that uh, one might expect, uh, because of uh, because of uh, of uh, some uh, uh, of a uh, deviation that we face in the region. Uh, deviation uh, uh, in uh, we, I, I mean that our uh, uh, major uh, trading partners, uh, uh, European Union, and for Macedonia and some other countries, uh, uh, Germany. That absorb uh, most of our, uh, let's say, of our exports. So it seems that there was a, uh, there has been a bias, and still uh, uh, there is a bias, uh, to be more open and, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, direct your efforts more to the developed countries of the European uh, Union for trade relationships than uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, put uh, much. Uh, uh, Effort and energy in uh, uh, developing relationship uh, relationships with uh, neighboring countries. And when I say that uh, this is a, a deviation from the rule, uh, we, we all know there is simple rule that the trade is the most most intensive between neighbors. So uh, Switzerland with uh, neighboring countries, uh, Austria with neighboring countries, but uh, we don't trade much with uh, our east and our west neighbor, unfortunately. With uh, uh, Bulgaria and Greece, uh, the situation is much better with uh, uh, north-south uh, uh, axis with uh, Serbia and uh, uh, Greece. Professor, let me also ask you about the reform of the energy sector because in 2006-7, then you also joined the Energy Community for Southeastern Europe, which was created in Athens in 2006, and was that also one of the key sectors of reforms in Macedonia? Yeah. Uh, uh, even uh, 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 Austrian uh, company entered uh, entered into into uh, distribution of uh, uh, energy in that uh, in that uh, uh, chain uh, of uh, uh, production distribution and uh, supply of uh, energy and uh, also EVN is uh, a supplier. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know the, the, this is a, a renowned uh, company and. Uh, uh, I, I think that it was uh, it was uh, it, it has had uh, a very positive and brought uh, very positive results in terms of uh, quality of uh, let's say infrastructure for distribution of energy, uh, then uh, billing uh, and uh, collection of uh, payments, uh, uh, reduction to the minimum of uh, non-payment uh, of uh, uh, electricity which was present and. Uh, you know the situation. Uh, I understand that you've lived in Albania. You know uh, uh, the uh, immense problems that they they had with uh, unofficial, uh, let's say, use of energy, which uh, uh, which uh, contributed to, to you know frequent blackouts and uh, uh, low uh, uh, low level of uh, uh, low level of, of quality of supply. Uh, so uh, uh, you know uh, it, it has had uh, very positive results. Uh, brought very positive results for Macedonia. Also, Macedonia, as you mentioned already, in doing business is one of the best countries in Southeastern Europe in the World Bank ranking. And it's the 17th in globally as the best uh, globally. Used to be. The 17th. It's <laughs> quite an achievement, actually. Used to be. Used to be. We are, we are not uh, happy for the last few years because, you know, uh, the uh, position has deteriorated with the, uh, because of the present, go the present government uh, does not, does not uh, pay much attention uh, to this. So we used to be uh, in uh, certain years uh, among the uh, first 10, uh, let's say reformers uh, in terms of uh, doing business, but uh, we have uh, lost uh, uh, lately 
uh, the uh, primate to uh, some other countries which are more aggressive in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, further uh, improvement of their business condition or uh, conditions or uh, conditions for doing business. But That's we are still. It's there. good. It's good. Professor, let me also ask you about uh, the effects of the great financial crisis 2008 and also especially of the Greek financial crisis and the debt crisis 2010-11, because this must have been very complicated double hits for Macedonia, given your big exposure to Greek investments and to the Greek market. Listen, uh, uh, yes, uh, you, you're right. Uh, uh, this uh, two crises coincided with uh, uh, two periods that uh, our economy entered into a uh, double deep recession. In 2009, we uh, had recession. Uh, it was minus uh, 0 0.4, but it was still, you know, no growth or minus. And also in 2012, uh, again, our economy went into, into recession. Uh, consequences from the financial crisis were disastrous. You know that the uh, foreign, exchange, uh, foreign exchange markets uh, froze. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, I, uh, as Minister of Finance, and I think that was the time that we last met in uh, Vienna, the uh, Vienna Economic Forum. I had a meeting uh, uh, with uh, the uh, then uh, president of uh, Raiffeisen Bank, uh, you know, with, uh, which at uh, that time was uh, uh, spreading across the Balkans, and they still were not, uh, uh, have not entered Macedonia. And uh, you know we lobbied for Raiffeisen to uh, uh, come to Macedonia. And uh, uh, at, at one of the uh, sessions of the Vienna Economic Forum, I think in 2007, uh, Mr. Stepic uh, was uh, asked uh, uh, publicly, and uh, uh, he made a commitment that they will enter Macedonia. I met Mr. Stepic the following year, <coughs> year with uh, in in <coughs> I think in Frankfurt at the uh, Banking Economic Forum. Uh, actually, I had the same table. Uh, I, 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 I sat at the same table uh, with him and some other bankers, but that was the beginning of the financial crisis. And he, I remember his words. He was aware what will follow. That uh, you know, I will, uh, if you allow me, cite him. Uh, this was, I think, uh, uh, October two thousand and eight. He said that uh, uh, that uh, it will be bloody. Uh, what will what will follow next? And, uh, next, and in you know a month or two, the uh, financial markets uh, froze. So uh, we uh, uh, our uh, exports uh, 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 in 2008 and two, two, 2009, uh, uh, you know, reduced by one third. One one third with we we, we lost the foreign currency that was uh, you know uh, arriving to the country uh, from exports. It affected our uh, foreign exchange reserves uh, because we uh, were determined to keep the, uh, the, the peg. Uh, uh, and at that time, uh, in uh, a couple of months, in uh, four, four, or five, uh, four or five months, <coughs> 2000 and, uh, late 2008 and early 2009, uh, the National Bank uh, with interventions, uh, the foreign exchange uh, markets, lost one third of the foreign exchange reserves, uh, which were at that time uh, close to 2 million euro. Uh, 600 million euro uh, was the intervention, but uh, still, still, you know, we, we uh, kept the uh, uh, financial stability, macroeconomic stability. We paid a high price. The, uh, uh, the, the uh, 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 policy rate of the National Bank uh, uh, went as high as 9% at that time. Now we are in the in the midst of crisis. Uh, how situation is different at this moment? Uh, uh, the 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 policy rate of the uh, National Bank of Macedonia is 125 now, 125, 25. But the situation cannot be compared. At that time, as you remember, uh, the uh, international financial community uh, uh, didn't know how to how to respond. You know, uh, many were. Uh, uh, afraid that uh, they may may uh, may invoke uh, uh, inflation, uh, 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 preached austerity, and now the situation is quite different. There is there is a lot of a lot of money on <coughs> on the on the uh, on the market, and uh, you know the situation in Macedonia uh, started to stabilize. We uh, when we uh, issued euro bond in uh, June. 2009, but uh, we had uh, we, we paid a high price of uh, uh, almost 10%. Uh, but uh, to remind you, 
European Union countries like uh, Lithuania, uh, Slovenia before us, they were paying 7% at that time. Macedonia, uh, two or three weeks ago, issued uh, Eurobond, we, uh, you know, uh, uh, raised 700 million. For the second time, uh, 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 last year, we raised 700 and I think 700 and uh, 700 million euro uh, for, you know, uh, uh, finance, fi financing uh, the, the budget gap, uh, uh, the, the cost of, uh, let's say, uh, supporting the citizens and the economy, uh, health sector, uh, etc. And we have, uh, you know, uh, repayment of uh, a bond that uh, was issued in 2015. Uh, so and uh, we we uh, achieved uh, achieved uh, uh, very low interest rate uh, around I don't know uh, less than two percent. Professor, you kept a hard co uh, currency policy throughout the financial crisis. You had the next crisis, the Greek debt crisis, and in 2014-15 yes. you had the next crisis <laughs> when again external events like the Ukraine war and the Syrian uh, civil war. And there was then also a big shock for Macedonia with the refugee crisis in 2015. And what was your situation economically in that year? Uh, listen, uh, but to be to be honest, to be honest, uh, I don't think that uh, uh, the refugee crisis affected uh, much the economic situation in Macedonia. Of course, uh, we bear additional costs uh, for the forces uh, on the southern border, but uh, as you know, we let's say we were given some assistance in, uh, there might be some financial assistance in, uh, and assistance in, 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 in terms of manpower. Uh, some countries, uh, let's say from Central Europe, and uh, even Austria, as I remember, sent uh, some policemen uh, to assist our, uh, our uh, let's say our uh, forces uh, for uh, orderly, uh, let's say situation, to keep the situation orderly. Uh, Macedonia was uh, not, uh, 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 target country or the destination uh, for uh, these uh, migrants during the during the migrant cr crisis, and uh, uh, I, I said I, I don't think that it uh, uh, has a uh, uh, big effect uh, together with uh, uh, the crisis in Ukraine on Macedonian economy. The major effect came with the internal crisis, you know, uh, political crisis. Uh, uh, between 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 the parties, uh, you know, uh, uh, the government of Mr. Grevsky uh, uh, turned into more authoritarian, uh, let's say, uh, uh, administration of uh, power. Uh, opposition uh, started to uh, revolt, and we entered political crisis uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, revealed uh, uh, unlawful. Uh, uh, surveillance of uh, uh, communications, uh, etc., and country country was stuck in uh, 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 political crisis, which affected uh, the economy. Also, in 2015-16, we had a very bad performance in, uh, let's say, in the in the economy. Uh, so that was uh, that was the the major uh, crisis that we experienced at that time. So let me ask you, then was the Prisino agreement 2015 and uh, the crisis was more or less stabilized, 2016, the new elections, new government, and then also concrete steps towards European Union membership. And also after PRESPA came the NATO membership one year ago. How did this uh, future to be closer to Europe and really concretely on the way uh, towards uh, transatlantic integration? How did it affect the macroeconomic situation in Macedonia? Okay, uh, so uh, there were a lot of dynamics that, uh, as, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, in 2016, in December, we had the elections. Although it took uh, uh, five months uh, for, let's say, the uh, president of the uh, parliament to be elected because, uh, uh, and we had, we had uh, at that time uh, uh, interim government. Uh, because this, uh, before Mr. Grievski uh, resigned, as you know, uh, according to the uh, Persian, uh, Persian agreement. We had internal uh, crisis, uh, you know, in, on the uh, 27th of April, uh, 2017, uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, unsatisfied uh, uh, let, uh, citizens uh, stormed the parliament and we felt the the effect of that uh, the, of that of that uh, uh, crisis uh, uh, for 
for a long time. Uh, the, the process of uh, assigning uh, uh, ratification of uh, the uh, PRESPA agreement was uh, controversial. Uh, so it uh, kept uh, many people in the country dis dissatisfied and uh, demoralized. But uh, the major, uh, let's say, the major, the major uh, result was uh, uh, NATO membership, uh, which uh, we hope uh, has uh, cemented or uh, guarantees the uh, security uh, position of uh, Macedonia. Uh, it, 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 uh, the economy started to uh, stabilize. Uh, we uh, started to achieve growth rates for 2017-18 and part of 2019, no, no, uh, 18 and 19, uh, towards, uh, let's say, what uh, we consider as uh, a potential of Macedonian economy, around uh, uh, 4% with this capacity uh, uh, growth. Uh, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, when everybody hoped that we will start uh, the process of negotiations uh, with uh, the European Union, we have been a candidate country since 2005. We have had uh, a dozen of <laughs> uh, 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 positive uh, recommendations of the European Council for start of negotiations. But now all of a sudden, uh, this uh, problem with uh, Bulgaria, uh, which uh, vetoed uh, the start of negotiations last, uh, last year, uh, has uh, appeared, uh, and uh, it seems that there is no end uh, of the travels of Macedonia as a country in uh, its accession towards the European Union. Because you are started uh, 2005 in December with EU candidate status, and then unfortunately there was this French blockade in 2019, it was, I think. Yeah? And can you say what was the impact of this uh, French veto? What was the impact to how it was perceived in Macedonian public? Uh, okay, uh, it, uh, it, it, it was, uh, uh, it, it, it resulted in uh, disappointment, one of the, uh, one in the series of disappointments, I, 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 I would say, but, uh, you know, we were patient, uh, we were patient uh, for uh, uh, half a year, then, uh, you know, this uh, new framework was uh, adopted by the European Union, but, uh, then uh, all of a sudden, as I said, uh, it appeared that uh, Bulgaria uh, has waited for their turn uh, to uh, uh, make uh, problems uh, to Macedonia on its uh, way to accession. And now uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, the rhetoric, uh, the rhetoric, uh, the rhetorics and of, of Bulgaria, of their uh, politicians, of their government, they have. Uh, elections coming uh, uh, quite soon, so we will uh, see what the, the structure of the new government will be. But it seems that uh, it is uh, uh, very serious, even more serious than the Greek object objection on, on our name, because uh, uh, Bulgarians, you know, uh, uh, deny our own identity, our own language, you know, they, they, they try to, let's say, uh, sell the idea that uh, at one night and overnight in 19, uh, 19, uh, 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 1944, uh, we were transformed from Bulgarians into Macedonians. Listen, if you allow me, I was born in 1960. You know, uh, I was uh, living close to my grandfather, who was born uh, at the at the at the beginning of the of the night uh, of the uh, of the 20th century, uh, 1900. Uh, so. I never heard of uh, him or other relatives, my uncles who were, who were born in the 20s and 30s uh, in the previous century, uh, that they ever felt that they were Bulgarians. So, uh, you know, this is something uh, which, is, which is very uh, difficult, which is uh, uh, quite personal. And uh, listen, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, there was uh, this uh, uh, discussion in the European Parliament and for the first time, uh, the European Parliament uh, has adopted uh, 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 an amendment presented by the Bulgarian side and some other parties in the European Parliament, where they, uh, you know, uh, accuse Macedonia of mistreatment of Bulgarians. And uh, the Bulgarian parliamentarians, uh, MPs in the European Parliament, they claim 
that it, it, this has been ongoing for, I don't know for how long time, but for the first time now in 2021, you know, one can go back and see the discussions in the European Parliament. Uh, uh, I don't remember that anybody has, anybody has raised that issue. But this was this was a counterattack. This was a counterattack because some uh, members from the socialist parties, led by uh, Mr. Bar uh, Marek, uh, Marek Belka, they uh, have uh, proposed uh, 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 an amendment which didn't pass, uh, unfortunately, uh, which was uh, you know uh, which was asking from Bulgaria to stop with this uh, uh, you know uh, harsh rhetoric towards Macedonia. So today, Professor, is the 27th of March, and it's exactly one year that Macedonia, North Macedonia, is now a full member of NATO. Do you think that America, now under the President Biden, will have some positive impact on the negotiations between the two allies, Bulgaria and North Macedonia, to reconcile and to open the way to the European Union? Uh, we, we hope so. We hope so, because uh, uh, we all know uh, from uh, let's say the format of the uh, new uh, uh, president, Mr. Biden, and uh, 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 let's say his uh, secretary of state, uh, that uh, they are uh, more determined to uh, strengthen the uh, uh, North Atlantic alliances than the uh, Trump administration. So we hope that uh, in uh, they, they will uh, uh, look uh, upon this issue as security issue in this part of southeastern Europe, and they will uh, try to, uh, let's say, assist and mediate uh, to the, uh, for the problem to be solved. Very good. Professor, let me ask you, looking back in the last 10 difficult years from 2009 to 2019, was the hard currency policy of the Macedonian dinner and the flat tax of 10% uh, useful to stabilize the economic despite all these political difficulties? Oh, uh, definitely, definitely, because uh, you know uh, uh, you you can't think on, of anything else uh, for uh, the structure of the economy, small open economy, uh, which is uh, uh, is and uh, has been uh, an object of uh, uh, quite a shocks uh, from outside. So these are uh, still the right policies that uh, served Macedonia quite well. When you look at uh, Bulgaria, when it joined in 2007, the European Union was significantly poorer than Macedonia is today with $6,000 per capita. Do you think it's justified to, to bring Macedonia very soon in the European Union economically? Oh, uh, Macedonia should have uh, uh, entered the uh, uh, European Union before Bulgaria because we were uh, uh, readier in uh, let's say the at the beginning of this uh, century than bulgaria uh, be, be, because we, we we know you know uh, they they had hyperinflation in 1996 uh, uh, 1997 but uh, uh, so uh, uh, we have uh, uh, paid a very high price of uh, uh, being a, a country in an unstable region with uh, unresolved historical uh, disputes uh, and the dreams about, uh, let's say, great uh, nations. Uh, still, uh, probably you've uh, uh, seen the map uh, of Greater Bulgaria that uh, their, uh, uh, their, their deputy uh, 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 prime minister, Mr. Karakachanov, uh, uh, published on the 3rd of March. So Bulgaria has their national holiday uh, on the uh, 3rd of March, uh, which is uh, the creation of the Greater Bulgaria, which lasted for several months. No, that's that out outrageous. So they, 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 they have never, they have never, uh, they have never uh, uh, left these dreams uh, for uh, uh, unfortunately great, great states, uh, even in the 21st century. So, and we are victim of that. Professor, from the regulatory alignment with the European Union and from the macroeconomic stability and conditions, do you think it's possible that Macedonia would be a full member of the European Union by 2024 European Parliament elections and participate also in that elections as a full member already from a technical economic level? No, I, I wish that uh, were true, but uh, it's uh, uh, not feasible. It's not feasible. Technically, economically, or politically? 
uh, I mean, uh, both, both because uh, uh, I, uh, I, I don't think that uh, uh, during this year, 2021, we will start uh, negotiations. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, optimist, and will take it will take at least several years, you know, to uh, uh, according to the new framework uh, to negotiate the the, the chapters of, uh, of uh, accession to the EU. Although we have progressed earlier uh, with the work that uh, previous governments uh, have uh, done in terms of accession to the EU and preparation of the country, but. I, I think uh, 20, 2024 is very, very optimistic. Now, let me ask you about the regulatory standards. Has Macedonia adopted European regulatory standards in the last 15 years of uh, EU candidacy? Or do you think it's oh. been, uh, still a big gap to achieve it? Oh, 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 of course, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, each, uh, each law, each law that uh, is being prepared or amendments in the law, are accordance towards uh, in accordance to, uh, uh, with uh, uh, EU directives. You know that there is a, a, a separate uh, uh, department, a ministry within the government for EU accession. So, so would you estimate you are ninety percent uh, regulatory aligned with the EU, or fifty percent, or ninety five? Sorry, sorry I, I I'm not an expert in that. I I, I can't say, but I uh, I would guess that it is uh, more than fifty percent. Good, Professor. One other question: In the Prespa Agreement, it was also decided to have uh, the currency of the Macedonia to called the currency of North Macedonia. Has that already happened? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the currency? The currency of Macedonia, North Macedonia, is already new um, um, banknotes issued, like with North Macedonia. Oh, I, I think it's in 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 preparation, in preparation. But but uh, the National Bank change uh, was the among the first in institutions to uh, change their name. So is the National Bank of uh, the Northern uh, North Macedonia. So uh, it will uh, it will it will uh, use this name. You know, as a professor, uh, I am, uh, uh, I will be honest, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm uh, uh, even annoyed and bothered. Uh, our, uh, of course, we comply. Uh, our university, you know, is, uh, everything is uh, North Macedonia, but I'm annoyed when uh, some of the professors uh, ask their students in their term papers to uh, use the name North Macedonia. I had a dispute with a colleague uh, two, uh, uh, a year ago. One of uh, I mentoring uh, a PhD candidate, uh, which was, uh, you know, preparing a, a thesis uh, 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 on, on monetary issues, uh, which uh, uh, affect the span of uh, the last 25 years, you know, and. Uh, uh, in in the title uh, before the council uh, of, of the of the university. Uh, it was written uh, in Macedonia. Mm -hmm. It was returned, you know. It was returned, and I argued, you know, are you uh, are you are you aware what uh, what you're doing? You know, uh, in the title of uh, the research uh, paper, it could be Ottoman Empire, you know, it could be Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, you know, <laughs> you know, because uh, so uh, uh, you know that there was uh, over uh, over compliance on the part of the of, of, of the public, which was which was of course uh, 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 led and uh, uh, encouraged by uh, the present government and uh, Mr. Zayev. Professor, let me ask you one question: because Montenegro has a different currency policy, and also Kosovo, they have both uh, unilateral adopted the euro. So my question is also, why was it necessary in the Prespa agreement to, to agree on a new currency called the North Macedonian Dina and not to have uh, directly to adopt the Euro because you will anyhow join the European Union and your currency is backed anyhow since 25 years to the Euro, so in 22 years. And so my question is, why not you? Yes, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised because uh, because you insist of uh, Northern Macedonian dinner because it has not been an issue uh, here. Uh, everybody, you know, uses the the name dinner, not Macedonian dinner. Uh, dinner is uh, dinner. Uh, that's first. Uh, second. Uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, unilateral adoption of euro is uh, not uh, legal. Is not recognized 
by uh, the European Central Bank, the issue of Euro, but they tolerate it. They tolerate it. Uh, uh, Macedonia feels uh, with this policy that uh, we have had of macroeconomic stability, uh, there is still uh, there are still advantages of having uh, own currency. Not in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, pride, uh, patriot, patriotic pride, etc. Uh, forget it. But uh, in, ter in terms of uh, uh, economic uh, uh, policy and uh, some uh, uh, leeway uh, for uh, 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 independent uh, monetary policy that uh, uh, gives the US a country uh, uh, having your own currency. Good. Professor, what do you think about the next coming four or five years? What are the most important economic reforms you would see from an academic view? What is really missing? What needs to be done? What are the priorities for the future? Uh, okay. Uh, I, uh, with, uh, after, you know, after uh, uh, several years uh, uh, being passive uh, uh, from uh, politics, now I uh, I must tell you that I'm again member of the executive committee of the uh, new leadership of uh, Vomero de Pamane. I also led the preparation of uh, the party program for uh, elections that uh, we uh, have had last year. Unfortunately, we didn't form a government, although we were the winning party. We had more, uh, let's say, uh, deputies than uh, social democrats, but that's, uh, you know, politics. It, it has happened. We have seen it in some European countries. Uh, making coalitions uh, is uh, uh, much more seems to be much more important than than uh, winning uh, the uh, elections. Uh, we think that uh, the next step uh, for uh, Macedonia uh, is to uh, implement uh, smart industrial policies. Uh, smart industrial industrial policies because uh, you know at the lower level uh, we. Uh, uh, there is a danger that uh, we experience uh, uh, the uh, curse, of, which is in uh, economics called uh, uh, middle income uh, uh, country curse, that you are stuck at that level. Like, like, uh, like, like let's say, uh, look at uh, some of the countries like Mexico or uh, Argentina, etc. You know, you you reach a certain level and that's it. You you do not grow. You can go to uh, you can't go to the next next step. So the next step would be uh, to uh, 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 to uh, uh, assist uh, those uh, Macedonian sectors and, and companies uh, with uh, uh, government assistance, uh, this kind of uh, smart industrial policy uh, to uh, become uh, more competitive uh, at the uh, foreign uh, market and uh, uh, restructure uh, uh, towards the direction of uh, uh, production of uh, products with uh, a higher level of uh, uh, value added. So this uh, this is a, a major. Uh, this would be one of the major uh, efforts uh, in the in the future. And uh, of course, uh, it all depends on the developments in the European economy. I hope that uh, there will be further deepening of uh, uh, economic relationships uh, within the region, the countries of the Western Balkans. It's not only in our interest, but uh, this, this is something that is being supported by our uh, partners in the European Union. That is something that they expect of uh, all the countries. Uh, so, and uh, further uh, uh, accommodation of uh, our legislation with uh, in the accession process with that of the European Union. That's, uh, that's the future. Since 2017, there is also the project of a regional economic area in the framework of SEFTA. And to integrate, it's also called mini Schengen, and there is different terms for that. Do you see uh, economic potential of further opening the borders and creating an internal market in Southeastern Europe in the preparation towards the European Union? There is economic potential, huge, but uh, uh, also uh, it is uh, being uh, or might be impaired uh, by political uh, developments and uh, disagreements. You see the quarrels between Mr. Vucic and Mr. Rama, now Mr. Kurti. Uh, this is a problem that is hanging, uh, you know, the frozen Kosovo uh, conflict, unfortunately, which affects the whole region. So, what's so your... uh, 
directly to your, to your question, this, this is one of the major obstacles towards, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, more uh, successful development of uh, the uh, regional development and regional cooperation. So because Macedonia has recognized also the Republic of Kosovo and is also on friendly terms with Albania, with Greece, what is your regional outlook here? What do you think in the coming years it will be possible to have a better economic integration in the area? Uh, we might we might uh, uh, work on uh, improving of, of infrastructure. Uh, let's say uh, uh, the Macedonian government has started uh, uh, the twenty something kilometers of the highway to connect with the Kosovo border, and uh, this is something that. Uh, uh, a huge part of the business community has been, has been uh, lobbying and asking for. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that might be, uh, that, that will be, of course, there will be uh, some improvement, improvement depending on the economic conditions in these countries. Because, because listen, uh, uh, when you, when you uh, single Kosovo and Albania, or you mentioned also, also, also Greece, uh, it seems it seems that uh, 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 at the level of development, the structure of the economy that these economies are, uh, uh, there are not uh, huge uh, possibilities for trade. There, there are, of course, uh, but uh, as I said, uh, we are more uh, turned towards uh, uh, developed countries of the European Union uh, as uh, absorbents of our exports. You mentioned infrastructure because Macedonia has now first time, and also congratulations, this very important Corridor 10, which leads from Budapest and Vienna, where I am, also to Greece, and it's now completed, as I understand. That's a major yes, achievement, yes. It is. and congratulations. It is. My question is also, will you build highways to Albania and to uh, Bulgaria as well? Uh, to, uh, for, uh, uh, with Bulgaria, with Bulgaria, we have been building this uh, uh, railway, but uh, for quarter of a century now, and uh, now in this dispute, they, they are mentioning this uh, as an obstacle for, uh, for cooperation. Uh, of course, there are projects uh, for uh, Corridor 8. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, 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 it depends, it, it depends on, on uh, uh, access to uh, financial resources. Uh, the, Economic crisis uh, with the pandemics uh, has slowed uh, the development down, but this is something uh, left for the future that's inevitable, of course. So let us talk about the current pandemic crisis and the financial and the economic impact. I'm sure it's also very difficult for Macedonia. And what exactly is the economic response and what you think will happen in 2021, 22 in response to the debt situation and all these matters? Uh, you know, one of the answers to the question to these questions that economists economists uh, hate is, uh, you know, when you respond with uh, it depends. Uh, it depends of uh, on the on the development of uh, of the pandemics. Uh, now, uh, Macedonia in the region is uh, in a very harsh uh, third uh, wave of uh, of the pandemics. We haven't started uh, uh, with uh, mass vaccination of the population. We only uh, got as a gift from uh, uh, Serbia, uh, a number of uh, several thousands uh, vaccines to vaccinate the uh, first responders, the, the health workers, uh, 3000 uh, Sputnik uh, uh, vaccines uh, with no announce announcement of further delivery. Uh, last night, we heard from the Minister of uh, Health uh, at last, uh, uh, encouraging uh, news that uh, uh, later this month, on the, uh, on the 28th, uh, the first shipment of uh, uh, 24,000 uh, uh, AstraZeneca vaccines doses will uh, arrive within the COVAX uh, mechanism. Our uh, government uh, was not successful in uh, securing vaccines, uh, let's say, compared to what uh, Serbian, uh, uh, what what Serbian government uh, uh, has done? They have, uh, they they are, they are champions. You know, they have vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated with uh, uh, two doses, both doses, uh, one million uh, people so far, and more than uh, more than two million 
uh, uh, have received at least uh, uh, one uh, one dose. Uh, now uh, uh, we we, uh, we we think uh, we think that uh, much depends on uh, uh, as much as uh, possible of the adult uh, population uh, being vaccinated by the end of the summer. Uh, uh, which will provide some, uh, let's say, certainty, security, because it, 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 uh, we have seen it from other countries, uh, uh, starting with, uh, let's say, Israel, uh, United Kingdom, uh, uh, United States, that uh, vaccination uh, is uh, one of the uh, best ways uh, to see the end of the tunnel, uh, to end the pandemics. But uh, uh, as elsewhere, uh, we are faced with uh, uh, this lack of uh, uh, of of, of uh, uh, vaccines, uh, Macedonian government uh, has tried uh, now for the last uh, uh, nine ten months to uh, let's say uh, provide uh, some uh, uh, financial assistance to certain uh, 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 let's say uh, 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 groups, uh, uh, low income groups in the economy, uh, to uh, provide assistance for payment of wages in uh, uh, some industries uh, which were closed with government decree or they worked with reduced hours in the service uh, industry, uh, restaurants, etc. Uh, but uh, the resources are limited. You know, we are spending uh, borrowed money. As, uh, as, I, uh, as I said, uh, uh, last year we experienced a budget deficit of uh, 9%. Our uh, foreign uh, debt, uh, our uh, public debt, not foreign debt, our public debt has uh, exceeded the level of uh, 60%, uh, which was considered as uh, you know uh, upper limit uh, for a country at this level of development. Uh, so uh, the uh, situation is not uh, is not uh, uh, quite uh, optimistic. Although uh, the business in Macedonia struggle uh, to uh, keep their employment, to keep the operations. They are faced with uh, cancelling of orders from, uh, you know, their partners in the European Union. Uh, so uh, let's hope that uh, by the end of the year, uh, situation will uh, much improve in Europe, uh, of course, when which you, will affect Macedonian economy. When you see, for example, what the rich countries can do, the American president here has now issued another 1.9 trillion dollar rescue package or also Germany has also about 10% of GDP redistributed now for the help. Obviously, that's much more difficult for countries in development at uh, the economic. Oh, 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 oh yes, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, for, for countries uh, like uh, the United States and Great Britain, uh, they have the privilege to uh, uh, print their own currency, of course, uh, within, within limits not to uh, provoke high inflation in the near future. European Central Banks has followed, uh, let's say, these uh, uh, policies uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, interventions, uh, monetary uh, interventions and uh, uh, fiscal interventions on the part of the governments. But this is not a privilege of uh, uh, countries that uh, have balance of uh, payments uh, constraints. So that's why, that's why we uh, need to be uh, very careful for each euro uh, that we spent uh, to be spent uh, uh, wisely uh, in uh, terms of uh, uh, protecting the uh, health and the lives of the citizens and uh, supporting uh, uh, as far as we can uh, the businesses. It certainly but, is uh, difficult economic balance to strike. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Because you know, because you know, uh, uh, there is a limit. Uh, 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 to, to what extent you can uh, create deficits and uh, uh, when uh, the public debt level uh, further increases, uh, investors that uh, buy our debt uh, will become uh, uh, more careful and it will uh, start to increase the, the, the price of the debt. Uh, so uh, there is a limit uh, uh, to that. Do you think economically such a crisis would be easier to manage if Macedonia would be already in the European Union? Yes, of course, because the European Union provided uh, some uh, grants, uh, uh, budgetary funding for member countries on a pro rata uh, basis. So 
that's a, that's a privilege and handicap handicap for Macedonia and other countries to be out of the EU, EU uh, now Give and uh, not only not only in that, in that sense but in in, in a sense of uh, all this uh, uh, let's say obstacles limitations in providing uh, vaccines because we are uh, witnessing uh, health nationalism everybody wants uh, first uh, to take care of their own constituency which might be natural but uh, uh, you know uh, in terms of pandemic uh, it's not uh, enough that you uh, reduce the risks uh, within your own borders because this uh, virus does not recognize borders did you see the support which Greece got now from the European Union under the SURE instrument and also the level of vaccination Greece got, uh, um, it, I think it was uh, significant. I, I, I think, uh, of course, they, they are to judge uh, uh, whether they are satisfied because, uh, you know, some countries, including Austria, are not satisfied with, <laughs> with the, uh, uh, this kind of policies. Uh, so I can't speak in their name, but uh, but uh, they are benefiting from uh, their status. You are now a 16 years EU candidate. Is it time to join the European Union now? I hope that we will uh, not be left out uh, of the EU for uh, for an other uh, for another uh, 16 years. Uh, uh, I think that we can be we can be ready with the uh, uh, goodwill uh, and uh, resolution of uh, uh, political problems uh, of uh, uh, siding uh, away uh, this uh, historical disputes uh, that all countries in Europe uh, might rise if they wanted uh, if they had uh, benefit of their unwise enough to uh, let's say uh, undertake them uh, that uh, in uh, not more than four to five years, Macedonia will be completely ready to become a full EU member. Very good. Yeah? And I would also wish that very much even faster to happen, because I've seen also how it worked in Croatia. It was possible to speed up everything once there was political will from Germany, oh, yes. Austria, yes. Italy. There was this wish and then Croatia <laughs> was in 2013. And I will never forget that also in 2004, it was in the White House lawn, the ceremony when all NATO members were invited. And it was also then uh, Albania there, it was Croatia there, and also the Macedonian president yes. was already invited. Yes. So it was yes, really yes, possible yes. Uh, to speed up things. But unfortunately, in the case of Macedonia, we lost a decade. Yes, uh, you know, uh, there, 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 were, there, there was a sliding back. Uh, due to uh, problems that are uh, not uh, not uh, in our power or uh, out of our reach. Okay. I wish that it will now be uh, wiser policies in Brussels and Washington pursued, and I'm calling also for this. I would like to thank you, Professor, for this very far-reaching and uh, important interview uh, covering 30 years of uh, economic history of Macedonia, of North Macedonia. And I wish you good luck with your accession and I hope that this will be speedy and also that you recover from this economic crisis here, the fourth economic crisis Macedonia has in uh, 10 years. I hope it will be a speedy recovery and also then a lot of economic growth and thanks that you have good hard currency policy, low flat tax and it was an honor to speak with the father of these reforms of the Macedonian <laughs> economic miracle. Thanks Professor Slavetsky for your time. Okay, I hope uh, it's slight exager exaggeration, but uh, thank you for uh, thank you for the invitation, uh, thank you for uh, this interview, and uh, thank you for your uh, support for the cause of uh, uh, the benefit of the uh, countries of this region. Thanks a lot, Professor. Bye bye. I will close now if it's okay. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thanks for your time. Bye. Good luck. I will send you everything. Bye. Thank you.